Yo, what up? Welcome back to the Flutter authentication tutorial. In the last one, we created this login screen and can now sign users in. Now, the next step is to click on this register now button and be able to create a new account for the user. Cool, so just to keep everyone on the same page, in the last video, we created this login page and filled out this sign user in method. So now we can input an email and just sign in. Now, just before we sort out the register page, let's just do a little cleanup on some code. And what I mean is if you look at the software keyboard, if I just toggle this, then on your phone, you'll have this bit of a overflow problem. So to sort this out, if you go to your scaffold, just wrap your column with a widget called a single child scroll view. And so that should just sort out that little error with the overflow. And the other thing I wanted to clean up is this wrong email message pop-up. So if the user gets the email or the password wrong, we created these two separate methods, but I think we could probably combine this to be just one method. So I just wanna delete the second one and let's just say kind of more generically, this is just a error message to the user. So I'm just gonna rename this method called show error message and let's require a string as the parameter. Okay, so what did we just do? Well, if we try to sign in and we get some exception, then we could check what the error is first before displaying the image. But just to make it simple, I'm just gonna say share error message and just put the error code in there. Cool, so that just makes our code nice and simple. And now it's time for the register page. Cool, so I wanna make that blue register now text to be clickable. So let's scroll down and find this text widget and let's wrap it with a gesture detector. And so we're gonna to need to create this function at the top. And require the constructors. Cool, now if you come back to the auth page, right now we're just checking if the user is logged in or not. And if the user is logged in, then we'll just return the home page. But if the user is not logged in, then right now we're just displaying the login page. But for this, I'm gonna create one more page called login or register. Let's have a Boolean to show the login page at the very beginning. And also let's create a method so that we can toggle between the login and the register page. So to do that, if this method gets triggered, then let's just do a quick set state and make the show login page just the opposite of what it was. Cool, so when we build this, if the show login page is true, then return the login page. Otherwise, just show the register page. Cool, and you can see there's a red squiggle under the login page because remember we have to specify this on tap method. So if we tap, then let's just do the toggle pages. And the register page we are about to create now. And for this, this is gonna be very similar to the login page. So I'm just gonna copy the entire login page Control A or Command A. And let's just copy this into the register page. And so I'm just gonna change login page to say register page. Cool, and for the most part, it'll be the same, but let's just change this up and say sign user up as opposed to sign user in. And the other big thing I want in here is I want one more text field for the confirm password. And at the very bottom, we should now say something like, already have an account, then log in now. Cool, so if I come back to this login or register page, we have an on tap to fill out. And this should work, so let's give this a go. So right now I'm on the login page and if I hit the register at the bottom, 
then we go to this new page. Cool, now it looks like we're gonna have to sort out some of this UI because it's getting pushed to the bottom. So just a quick fix is to just reduce the sizes of the stuff at the top. Cool, and now we can just toggle between the two pages. And I actually also realized for the register page, we should change up this message. Say like, let's create an account for you. Cool, and one last thing is the sign in button. We should say sign up. But if you go to the button, so remember how we created this button? Let's go to that component. So right now it looks like we just say sign in as a fixed string. So I'm just gonna create another variable just called text. When you create this button, let's fill out the text. So sign in for the first one and in the register, I wanna say sign up. Cool, there we go. Sweet, so in terms of the UI, everything's looking pretty good. Now for the actual snippet of code to create the user. If you go to your method, we did a sign in with email and password. So just start typing create user with email and password. And this method will create a new user. Now I wanna do just one quick check to see if the confirm password and the password is the same. So the password controller should be the same as the confirm password controller, which looks like I forgot to create. So let's just create that real quick. And we should give this controller to the text field at the bottom. Cool, so if the password controller and the confirm password controller are not the same, then let's show the error message. Cool, and let's just scroll down and make sure that we give the right controller. And let's just do a quick check now. So I'm just gonna say mitch at gmail.com and just give some password. And sweet, we're logged in with this new email. Now, if I go to my console, you should be able to see, you should be able to see that the new user is created. So that test at gmail.com, that one we just created manually right from this console. And in this video, we can now create a new user directly from our app. Now, one last thing I just realized is on a register page, you're not going to need this forgot password. Where are you? Yep, this guy we can just get rid of. Cool, much better. So that's essentially it for this video. We can now create a new user. And with that account, we can now log in to our app. So the next thing I wanna work on in the next video is Google sign in. So hopefully that goes well. And the following video after that is Apple sign in. Then we are done with authentication. So I'll put the code below so you guys can take a closer look at it. Play around and let me know if you have any questions i'll try to come around and help you out but other than that thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace